This is our news, the weekend edition, and on the broadcast tonight, it's another day into the search for the missing pilot, and his family is now speaking out. Plus, hear what the former BEC chairman has to say on that probe into BPL. And we introduce you to an 11-year-old author. Good evening, I'm Andrew Knowles, and thanks so much for joining us. Topping the news on this Remembrance Day, the family of Byron Ferguson, the pilot, fared missing after the plane he was flying crashed in waters off New Providence Thursday night, is tonight still holding on to hope that he will be found alive. They spoke with reporters today where they shared their heartbreak, but also questioned if more could have been done. Our Kyle Joaquin has the story. As day four of the search continues, the Ferguson family is still out here looking for their loved one. However, they're also expressing disappointment in law enforcement search efforts as well as communication. I'm, I'm sure he's out there. I'm not giving up on my husband and I don't expect anyone out here to give up on him. He's going to be returned home to us alive. 34-year-old Byron Ferguson would have been on his way to South Africa with his parents today to celebrate his father's birthday. However, as fate would have it, his family has spent the past four nights searching for him and the plane he was piloting when it went down in waters just off Nirvana Beach Thursday night. But it's what happened in the moments immediately after the crash that has this family troubled when the search was called off for the night just after midnight. The reason, visibility. No divers went into the water. Uh, the search was called off, um, I think before even midnight. Um, questions I have about these stuff is was uh, who who has that authority to call off a search and what is the criteria that they use? Ashton, okay, come on, come on. His brother Ashton questioning just how much effort was put into the search. The Defense Force had reported spotting the plane before it was submerged in water some two miles from the shoreline around 10 that night. But less than three hours later, choppers and vessels left the search area for the night. When crews returned the next morning, the plane was gone, believed to have been pulled into deep waters by strong current. No divers would have been in the water, nothing, no equipment, nothing available. That's just incompetence to me. I don't know anywhere else in the world where something like that would happen. That's just insane that this day, 2018 in the Bahamas, a plane crash, you have no divers and available until the next morning at light when you have a clear indication of where the plane is. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, you come back the next morning, you don't know where the plane is. They so from the time back, you they, discovered it, they you had that mark location mark you, where you they didn't found track it. the plane. You, the only thing you can say is, well, the current it's may have there. carried yeah. it. No, nothing is there. Nothing is there. What, what was done, anything, a GPS, put, do you have anything like you could put a GPS on that, mark that? Any buoy, buoy any ankle, something? Do you have a vessel that could just stay out there to give you visibility of what's going on with that vessel? Cell phone footage believed to have been taken by an officer on scene moments after the crash captures a man pointing to what he believes is a portion of the plane. The plane ran down, the plane ran down. Right here, debris over here. Debris right here. The family says they're not blaming anyone for the crash, but for the search effort put forward and the lack of communication from officials. When we spoke with Assistant Commissioner of Police, Lehman Delavo, Friday evening, he said they would search as long as necessary. However, on Saturday and Sunday, friends and family were the only ones seen searching the area. The actions that we took, up until the plane, you know, this was obviously a control landing. He knew we could not, he was losing altitude, he knew we couldn't make it to LBI. And he asked his friend to track the plane. Tracked his, he told his friend to track him, he was going to ditch this plane here. Byron is, Byron was flying from 14 years old. <laughs> flying in the Middle East in the desert? You flying off the Byron is, so, I confident in his ability. Byron is a beloved father of two, 
brother, son, and husband. The tight-knit family clung to each other for support as they addressed the media. They would spend the rest of the day as they did every day since getting the news, in the sand, hoping and praying for the best. We, 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 we have a family group. Listen, this is a closely, this, 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 my, this. Me and my brother, 18 close, months apart. We were in diapers together. Close, close thing to this family. bedroom for 19 years. <laughs> He was scheduled to return to work today in today, South Africa. The the parents today is my father's today birthday. Is birthday. Today is He's my father's my birthday. He's taking my parents to South Africa, but him today, today is my dad's birthday. He was returning to his job in South Africa today. And this would be this 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 would be face with. In the meantime, this family says they will continue to come out here every day and search in hopes that their family member will be found alive. Reporting from Nevada Beach for Our News, I'm Kyle Joaquin. All right, thanks a lot, Kyle. Well, in other news this evening, former Bahamas Electricity Corporation Chairman Leslie Miller is chiming in on the controversy surrounding BPL by expressing doubt that there will be a probe into the termination of the BPL's previous board. I never really saw the need for the probe. Days after the Prime Minister's press secretary confirmed that a promise probed into the removal of the entire Bahamas Power and Light Board had not begun, former BEC Chairman Leslie Miller says there was no need for it to begin with. The lady who was the chairman, she didn't only resign from, from BP, but she was fired. She resigned from the Free National Movement. What is the probe supposed to, to find out? I mean, that they had something going with, with Shell, um, North America with regard to the new plan that they want to put up at Clifton or what? Two months ago, Works Minister Desmond Bannister said the relationship between board members had deteriorated and they locked horns on virtually every decision. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis promised a probe to look into the matter. The issue escalated as Bannister got into a public back and forth with three of those former members. Miller is now questioning if the Prime Minister only promised a probe back then in an attempt to put an end to the public's bat. I don't see the, the, the need for the Prime Minister ready to get involved with no probing B. You see, the, the old board is gone, the new board is in. End of story, as far as I'm concerned. Miller said, with consumers seeing a drastic increase in their electricity bills and two units at BPL's Clifton Pear Power plant still down, the company has bigger issues to worry about. But, you know, when these things happen, people put pressure on you, so to pacify that urgent need, you may say something about, oh, I'll, 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 I'll check it out and see what took place. Maybe the persons who were left on the board could have explained to him what took place and why that crew had a different view from us. Now that they're gone, what else is there to talk about? It's history. Well, meantime, a former Chamber of Commerce chairman is touting a power generation deal recently signed by Bahamas Power and Light with Shell North America. Our Jared Higgs tells us what Gowan Bo thinks about the time frame put in place for the project's completion. A memorandum of understanding between the country's main power company and Shell North America is expected to serve as a long-term solution to persistent blackouts in the country. However, BPL officials say the deal won't be completed until early 2020. That may seem like a long way off, but former chairman of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce, Gowan Bo, says long-term solutions require substantial preparation. If you say to me that, okay, the earliest I could construct a plant is this time frame, I mean, you know, you're not going to be able to parachute in a plant. So from that perspective, there's practicality that says there's a timeline. So when you're constructing a major building or major project, it takes time. So in the interim, what is important is saying, well, how are we filling that void? So is 2020 concerning? Well, I would put it into the context of saying if that is delayed by industry standards, then yes, concerning. Shell's gas to power project involves a transition to liquefied natural gas. A power purchase agreement is currently being negotiated, after which construction on the plant is expected to begin. BPL officials also hinted at investments in renewable energy, especially on the family islands. We have to be very, very mindful of accelerating where we take advantage of the natural assets that are um, um, bestowed upon the Bahamas. So we have sunlight a large amount of time. So solar is one that certainly comes to mind. We have a tremendous amount of waters around us and wave um, supplies is another one. Wind, solar and hydroelectric systems are widely considered the future of energy production especially as they involve no air pollution. However, Bo says a barrier to renewables has been the expensive installation costs of the required infrastructure. In terms of the upfront cost is actually still 
I'm not going to say prohibitive, but still um, causes pause. Um, and reality is it does pay for itself, but it is more around finding avenues to make it more affordable for persons to use renewable and then have the BPL, BEC grid accepted into it so that persons can, if you will, rely less on, um, if you will, the fossil fuels and the plants. But I think that is one that needs to be set out. We have an energy policy all right, that has been spoken about, but it hasn't really been articulated. Reporting for our news weekend, I'm Jared Higgs. On to other news this evening. November is Diabetes Awareness Month, and there are a number of people living in the Bahamas who suffer from diabetes. But one young girl is raising the awareness about the disease through her own book. Katie Gets Diabetes is the name of the book, authored by 11-year-old Kaden Moss Moultrie. Kaden was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when she was just four years old. And now she's sharing her story and the inspiration behind it. When I was younger, my parents always used to read me a story about a monkey who got diabetes, but I knew monkeys can't really get sick, so I always had in my head that I had write my own book. The most exciting part was knowing that other kids will read my book and they'll know my experience about it. During her recent book launch at the Diabetic Research Institute, Kaden admitted that she doesn't enjoy living with the condition. Despite that, the optimistic Aquinas College 7th grader says she chooses to live a productive life. Diabetes has caused me to do many of the things I do and to be many of the things that I am. My need for exercise has caused me to become a competitive swimmer. My need for low carbs has caused me to start baking my own street treats. My not so good days has caused me to appreciate the really good days. Also, my diagnosis of type 1 diabetes has made me an author. And not just the author of one book, but of many, because there are more to come. Kaden showed appreciation to some special people who have played an instrumental role in her journey with diabetes. But she says penning the book would not have been possible without the loving support and encouragement of her parents. Her father, Ken Nice Moss Moultrie, says they're proud of all of Kaden's accomplishments, but more importantly, her desire to share her story with her peers. Um, one of the things that we support our daughter in doing is ensuring that she's able to get the word out, and that's what she's enjoying doing, um, making sure that she shares with other young people who find themselves struggling with type 1 diabetes. Um, interestingly, in the Bahamas, there are a lot of young people um, who are struggling um, with diabetes, and um, the Diabetic Research Institute right here where we are tonight, they do a whole lot to facilitate a lot of education and learning, and there are a lot of parents out there um, who, for a lot of reasons, um, are not taking care of those children with diabetes. And here's Caden's simple message to others who may be battling with the illness. To other people with the illness, I'd like to say diabetes doesn't define who you are. You, you could do whatever you need to do, just make sure you take care of yourself. All right, congratulations, Caden. And we will take our first break here, but still ahead tonight, the PLP chairman's message to the party's aspiring political candidates. Plus, government gets a thumbs up from two organizations over its recent VAT reportings. Those stories and more coming up. <laughs> 